who feels like crap. I don't know many people at the moment who would keep their hand down on that question because let's face it, the last few years have been an absolute nightmare of epic proportions. We have had to live through all kinds of stuff, including a global pandemic. In the UK, we now have a cost of living crisis. There is war everywhere. There is pain everywhere. There is struggle everywhere. And you know what? I think we're doing a really good job just being here and being present. So thank you for showing up. And I hope I'm going to be able to bring you a little bit of peace, a little bit of comfort and some practical takeaway tools that you're going to be able to use day to day to help you just feel that little bit better. Now, if like many people I come across, you are feeling completely stuck, completely overwhelmed and not sure what it is that you need to do next. I count myself in that camp a lot of the time. I've experienced some really difficult challenges, especially in this last six months then you're in the right place because I'm going to bring together a group of amazing people um, that I've met over the last few years who all specialise in different ways of helping people feel better. Now, I have specialists in somatic medicine, so body stuff, in yoga, in breath work, in things like qigong, in martial arts, in sport therapy, nature therapy, arts therapy, music medicine. I have friends who are physicians, I have friends who are neuroscientists, psychotherapists, counsellors, coaches, you name it. I have made it my business to collect the very best people who genuinely care what it means to be human right now and how we can actually all work together and pass on a little bit of wisdom to help ourselves and each other feel better. Now, some weeks you might have yours truly sitting here with my brew, discussing some really current topics around wellness and some um, hints and tips and toolkit building from my work, from my own Mindset Mojo programmes. Other weeks, you might find I have a little special mystery guest, uh, somebody who um, works really hard in a specific field that may just provide the key to the lock that you need to open up your mind and to open up a new space where you feel better. Whatever it is, whatever challenge that you're going through, um, I'm hoping that I can bring you some medicine and let's face it, we all need that right now and we all need a specific kind of medicine that's based around humanity, compassion, some of the old ways, autonomy, bringing back what it means to be a human being and bringing in some tools that we all have there. We all have this innate wisdom that we have just forgotten along the way. So we need to start uncovering and excavating and picking out who it was that we actually are meant to be and who we were before the world got its hands on us. It's my mission through this podcast, The Art of Feeling Better, and through all of my Mindset Mojo programmes to help in real time empower people to create their very own toolkits, to navigate their own way and take back authorship of their own story. So I'm bringing all my stuff to the table now. I see a lot of damage and I see a lot of toxic stuff being peddled all over the place and masquerading as help and as support and it isn't always helpful or supportive. Sometimes the things that we're seeing on social media are keeping us locked and trapped in a space where we feel inadequate, where we feel unworthy, where we feel like there's something wrong with us if we don't quite measure up. I've spent many, 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 many years in my past career in the fashion and beauty industry understanding um, the psychological tools that are used, um, especially across the media, at creating and sustaining a space where people feel like they're not good enough, like they're not worthy, like they're inadequate, something wrong with them, they must try harder, they must be more, they must put a mask on, no one else is struggling, so why am I struggling? Maybe if I just bought the next face cream or the right car or if I just had better gym equipment, maybe someone will finally choose me um, and maybe I will find my identity somewhere else and someone will tell me what I need to do in order to be happy. And we're always looking for these fixes. So I'm making it my business now. After years and years and years of retraining and working with some incredible people all over the world to actually bring back this balance between East and West and between science and spirituality and I'm setting up this channel specifically for that reason so I can have a good old chat with you every week and start to maybe find little little sparks, little embers there that have almost died out but not quite 
and I can just relight that touch paper, bring that spark back and help light the way for you to discover your own stuff, what it is that you need, what it is that lights you up and makes you happy and what your real identity is. So you have to help me get my numbers up by the way guys, you've got to pass it on, you have to like, you have to subscribe, like, subscribe, all that stuff, whatever you need to do, just do it. But how do we get some numbers up? How do we get some numbers up for the purpose of reaching as many people worldwide as is humanly possible to pass on some of this wisdom, some of this knowledge and some of these tools so that we can really, really, really shift things around in society and really help people to feel better. And I'm going to see if I can get the best possible version of a start off podcast going. So let's see how that works. I wish I jumped on this years ago when everybody told me to jump on it. I also wish I had the right equipment. I also wish I knew what I was doing. Um, however, it is what it is. One of the things I had to pass on. Shit happens. Let's just see what happens. Let's style it out. There's no mistakes, only opportunities. So who knows? Maybe I'll learn to be a professional camera gear person at some point. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about me. So think of me as your mindset breakthrough mentor, your inner growth guide, your pathfinder to freedom, maybe your suburban shaman. My role is to shine a light and uncover all of the deepest roots of all of the things that might have been holding you back and preventing you from being your awesome, ultimate, perfect, beautiful, wonderful self, the self that you were always meant to be. And my area of expertise that I accidentally uncovered about a decade ago, although, as you'll find out as time goes and I start to share a little bit more with you, it's always been there. It's always been there since I was a wee one. Since I was a child, it's been there. It just very much covered up and, and sometimes intentionally hidden. But now I'm kind of like, I'm out there now. So you know, I'm gonna, I've had to live my purpose authentically. So this is me giving you absolutely everything. But from a very, very early age, this has been my path. Always has been. But the last 10 years, since my trek to Peru, I really kind of started to embody that and started to, to really recognise and become consciously aware of my role, my purpose, my my part to play, should we say. So I, if any of you have ever heard of something called shadow work, which sounds absolutely terrifying, that really is what I do. And over the years, I've done lots of, of things um, and I've supported lots of people in various ways under very different guises. But when I reflect back, it really is all shadow work. It's all shadow work. So it's really interesting to to look back and understand that some of the things that I didn't understand at the time have actually come to light and I've always been that person. So shadow work isn't that scary. You know, it sounds like it is, but it really is just a case of uncovering some of the stuff that's got stuck. <clears throat> so all the stuff that's been buried away and hidden away in the deepest, darkest corners, because we don't like to deal with that because it doesn't particularly feel comfortable and I'm just going to ignore it. Somebody else will sort it out or it'll just go away if I ignore it enough, if I put enough masks on. We just don't want to deal with that stuff. I think, you know, most of you will know by now that that doesn't work. It doesn't because things always come back around to bite you on the arse in, in one way or another. So being able to have somebody that can guide you, that can be your way shower, can be your pathfinder, your illuminator and help you with that um, it is a real gift. And it's my gift and it's a gift that I want to share uh, as much as I can with everybody now. And um, it really is just as it sounds. It's a case of shining a light on those things that have remained hidden and bringing them out into the open where they, they stop controlling you there and they stop being so scary and they become smaller things that can easily be managed and they can be acknowledged. So it's, a, but it's a scary process because we don't want to do that because we don't like those things. Those things sent away or buried or kept covered up. Things that we don't like about ourselves, things that we don't like about other people around us. Um, or the situations that we've been in or our childhoods or things that have happened, things that we worry will happen. And we all have this going on. We all have various rates of imposter syndrome and people pleasing and perfectionism. And it's just uh, makes me really sad because as a, as a species, we think we're all that, don't we? We think we're really super smart and we're just like winning on expert level and we're so clever. And we're obviously the most advanced species, I think, 
it's pretty much the opposite in my mind. I think we're just terrible as a species. I think we need to really, really sit and take a long, hard look, get on the naughty step and think about what we've done. You only have to look around you to, to see and feel the damage that's being caused by, by humans. But I think there's, there's there's hope. I don't think we have lost everything. I think we have a unique point at the moment. I think we've reached a critical pivot point and a tipping point where more and more people, especially people that I come across, are recognising these things and they're recognising that things have to change and, and they don't know how and they don't know why or where or who, but they know things have to change because things simply can't continue and systems are breaking down and people are struggling more than ever before. And I think that that gives us this really unique opportunity to, to do something about it collectively. And, and, and I know a lot of people that are in a similar path to me that have some wisdom there to share. And if we can piece that together like a giant, beautiful tapestry, a big jigsaw, then we all have that to play. We're all, we're all an expert of our own experience. We all know what, you know what our lives look like. And we all have bits of learning and wisdom that we can pass on to other people. So. So I'm you know, really excited about this next chapter of my life now and the way things have changed and the ebb and flow and some of the challenges and some of the highs and the lows. I'm going to share these all with you as we go along the journey. You'll get to hear a little bit about my story and, and how I came to be here. Uh, not like the birds and the bees, how I came to be. You all know that bit. Like I'm not going to go into a biology lesson, but how I came to be here, like here now, being, I don't know whether you can see this on all the screens, but being Mama Wolf. Being my protector of my pack and that reaches out to you guys, my community, as well as my children, my family, my husband. Um, yeah, I will, I will talk, talk you through all those things. And hopefully the, you know, some of my experiences might give you a little bit of hope and inspiration and might kind of resonate with you. And you think, OK, that, I can relate to that. Um, and that's how it works. We just each one teach one is the old African proverb. It's passing it on, isn't it? It's doing what we can and it's passing it on with kindness and compassion. So that's what I'm hoping to be able to bring to the table for you. So, yeah, help you clear the way and, and help you free up some bandwidth and some space to be able to make these massive, massive transformations. And we don't look at them as massive transformations because that's scary. It's too much. We need to look at these tiny, tiny little weeds. Weed out these little bits and cast these tiny little stones into the water that just create ripples and the ripples grow and grow and grow. And I use a lot of um, animal analogies in Mindset Mojo and nature-based analogies because I love nature. You'll find me quite often in North Wales where I live, like with my shoes off in a waterfall. That I'm that person in the lotus position, do my breath work. Because nature's great. Nature's medicine. It's just we're so lucky and we should be so grateful. Uh, I, that really fills me up and allows me to be able to kind of pass on some of my energy. So yeah, I use lots of nature analogy and I talk about weeds. Weeds and seeds, pulling up the weeds, getting rid of the stuff that's just strangling and pulling all the nutrition out the ground, clearing the space, clearing the space for that lovely fertile land so that we've got a clean, fresh slate so that we can then plant some little seeds, little seeds of intention for the changes that we're going to start to bring in. And then once we've done that, we have to move on then to nurture those roots and shoots. You see where I'm going with that analogy? Before we get to the fruits, which is the other piece of alliteration, we have the roots and the shoots to nurture and grow and protect. And we have to keep building in new patterns, new ways of being, new ways of behaving, new ways of thinking. And eventually we have this real lush, fertile land and we've got all of the fruits that are coming from the work that we put in. And I think the biggest takeaway from, from today, the biggest thing that I can, that I can tell you about your onward journey if you decide to join me, is that there's no shortcut. There's no shortcut and there are no fruits until you work on the roots. I can guarantee you that from all the work that I've done with psychotherapy, neuroscience, all of the all of the various modalities at that end of the spectrum that I work with, and also on the other end of the spectrum with my spiritual disciplines, it's exactly the same story. There is no shortcut. You can put the masks on as much as you want, as much as you like, and there's no judgment in that, because that's how we get through our day. We have to mask up and we have to just paint on the smile. We have to deal with the shit. We have to pretend it's all okay because we've been conditioned over the years since childhood to believe that that's the way to live. And you can post on Instagram. See how I know or I'm down with the kids with all of the modern day apps there. We'll get on your TikToks, even more modern. 
and you can do the dances and you can post pictures of your dinner and you can post like winning at life, all those lovely imagery, which we all do, me included. Don't forget, I've spent years and years in the industry, the media and fashion industry. I see what goes on in the background. I know it's all lies. But we do that because that's our coping strategy and we pretend everything's great and we just focus on the fruits, right? We just focus on the fruits. I, as long as I've got that car, don't care if I get finance up to my eyeballs, get it. I need a car because everyone else has one and if I don't, I'm a failure or whatever it might be, the makeup. I need to do, I need, I need to get this latest trend that's going on because everyone on TikTok's doing it and if I don't, there's something wrong with me. Yeah, so the fruit, always about the fruit. It's about status. It's around what people will see, how, how people will judge me. Fruits, right? But you cannot get the good quality, decent, healthy fruits. You can't get any fruit at all if you don't have healthy roots and if you don't spend time cultivating and working on those roots. So I'm going to rewind us right, right back, right, 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 right back. So we start to look at some patterns and some things that are going on for us. And um, it'll be very individual for each person, but I guarantee there'll be something there. There'll be something that's providing the challenges, providing some of the toxicity in your life, providing the thoughts and the feelings and the behaviours that don't serve you. And all the self-help books, videos, apps in the world will not help you when you're looking for someone else to externally fix you or something else to externally fix you. You might as well just save yourself a lot of time, hassle and money because that will never work. You have to take ownership. You have to fix yourself. You have to understand actually that you're not broken. You're not lost. You're not broken. You need to spend some time with you and you need to spend some time doing the shadow, shadow work all the way, taking away the scariness of how it sounds and thinking, right, what is it? I, what is it I keep covered? What is it that I'm scared and afraid and worried? that I don't want to see it, I don't want to know about it. I just want to pretend it's not there. Because you know, you know, you know deep down. We all do. You know you're in there somewhere. You know there's a spark in there somewhere. It's been battered down by years and years and years and years and years of social conditioning, family dramas, whatever your parents learn as children that they had to pass on to you because they had no other way of doing it. All that crap. You don't need to live like that. You don't need to experience those things. Truly, you have the power right now to make a decision to create change, to take that control back, to reclaim your power. You can experience profound change. Not just for you, but for your friends, your family, siblings, children. Once you start shifting, everything shifts. So I'm going to just throw an idea out into the room with you now and just start to, to Think about why is it that we feel so bad? I mean, this podcast is called The Art of Feeling Better. How can we start to explore ways to feel better if we don't know how we actually feel or what actually makes us feel bad in the first place? So one of the first things that I want us to start looking at and uncovering when I have my chats with some of my friends, and I'm going to get my kids on here at some point. I'm even going to try and bribe my husband because you will love watching a conversation with me and Al Craig, I can tell you. But just think, just have a think, because every person has this completely different recipe to what makes them them and a completely different balance of emotional needs and physical needs and psychological needs that are either met or unmet or somewhere in the middle. And we're going to explore that in more detail. But if you're following along with me and if you're interested in making some changes in your life, then maybe just start to consider what are the things that really piss you off? What is it that makes you feel less than? What is it that triggers you off, makes you feel angry, makes you feel shame, makes you feel worry, anxiety, stress, pressure, guilt? Just start to have a little think about those things. Write them down if you want to, just so that you can kind of start the process or just have a think while you're listening to me. Because until you start to identify what it is that's providing the challenge, what it is that's holding you back, what it is that's keeping you stuck, you can't get any closer to making the change. And believe me, when you, when you start to uncover these things, and some of the conversations I'm going to have with some of my um, friends are really going to enlighten you, trust me, you really go down a rabbit hole. You really start to delve deep when you look at the human brain, the human psyche, the mind-body connection, the chemical responses we experience, things like programming from childhood, from society, from family, from teachers. It's so fascinating, and it's things that you can apply directly to you. So we're going to talk about all kinds of things from the school system. We're going to talk about the education system, 
I'm not known as a community disruptor for nothing. So, or rebel rouser, as, a, as my best friend told me I was the other day. I, I'll take that. I love that. But we're going to talk about these difficult topics. We're going to have a chat about all these things, the macro and the micro, the things that we're all globally responsible for and experiencing, the systems that are providing lots of damage, the rate of technology and how our little brains just struggle to keep up and adapt with the pace that we're moving at. We're going to talk about indigenous ancient wisdom, things that have been lost over the years and start to bring some of those back. Um, regardless of where you are in the world. You know, I, I literally consider myself to be that Western suburban shaman. I've had my 10-year Peruvian um, initiations. I, I, I can tell you all that in other times, but that is my role. My role for us now is delving deep, moving between spaces, going back into the darkness and bringing out the wisdom back to the community, back to my community when they need it the most. And we're right there. We're in a storm when we need something. So my job is to delve in and bring back the bounty and bring back the wisdom and the info that we need to start making some changes. So we're going to go into all of these incredible things. But yeah, we're going to go into systemic stuff. We're going to have a look at familial stuff. Um, childhood programming is a really interesting one. We're going to t- look at things like um, what is wealth? I'm going to speak to a couple of really, really good friends of mine that I'm doing some great pieces of work with at the moment globally around um, what is wisdom? What is wealth? What is wellness? Because they're so subjective. There's so many assumptions made about these topics and these things. And what is wealth to you? What does wealth mean? Is it zeros in the bank account? Is it the bottom line? Or is it wealth of experience? Is it an enrichment of family and friends and experiences? So many interesting topics and fascinating people that I'm going to be chatting to. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know, uh, I'd love you to give me some questions. On whatever platform, I'm going to do my best to respond and get to them. Don't know how it all works yet, but I'm going to have a go. But yeah, please feel free. Pop some questions, anything you'd like, any topics that you'd like me to cover, any questions about me or any questions that you are answering. Let's do this. Let's have a go. Let's see what we can build and let's see uh, what we can share between us and, and how we can kind of raise the energy, raise the vibe and start creating a space where we can collectively all start to feel a little bit better. I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, I hope that you all join me for the next one. Keep an eye out on socials and I'll be here with me brew and another fascinating topic that we can start to delve into. So have a beautiful rest of the day and I will see you next time.